All right, good morning, Alter Realty Group agents. This is Kevin Lauren. I'm the Director of Training and Marketing here. And today we're gonna to be going over what I like to call your agent digital footprint online. And so that kind of goes to the subject line of the email that you guys received. What do you look like online, right? So a lot of times when someone, you know, if you get a referral or if somebody just hears about you, they're going to probably Google your name, right? And so we always want to know what they're going to, what, they, what are they going to see when they do that, right? So it should be a really, really good in, uh, informative webinar. And before I get into our, our discussion today, I'm going to bring Bill Seitz from Clearview Mortgage on the line. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing today? I am doing uh, well. Thank you. Good morning, Kevin. All right. So, uh, Bill, I think you and I wanted to go over uh, a little something, but why don't you tell us what's going on with Mortgage Land first? Yeah, just real quick. I'll keep this short. I was just kind of looking at the financials this morning and um, just kind of going back and, and looking at the 10 year treasury, which uh, most of us know by now if you've been on these webinars. Um, you know, the mortgage rates, the 30 year mortgage rate is tied to the 10 year uh, treasury. And uh, it's really just been pretty flat for the last three weeks. I think since, you know, last the last week of August um, up until, you know, middle of September, we really haven't been hovering around the 1.3% uh, percent, uh, rate for the 10 year treasury on that return. Um, so the mortgage rates have been really stable. And, um, you know, with the jobs market being a little bit less than, you know, anticipated as far as growth, I don't see this changing much uh, in, the, in the near future. So once again, uh, as we all know, um, cheap money is, is fueling this market and that's going to continue. All right. Good. Glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Especially since I'm using Clearview right now to refinance, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you got, this is the time to take cash out or you, you utilize that, uh, you know, record equity that everyone's been, um, you know, kind of getting the benefit of uh, if you have projects or you want to consolidate with debt. I mean, now is the time. That's honestly what I'm doing. I'm consolidating some debt and I've got some home projects I want to get done. So it's exactly what I'm doing, taking advantage of, of uh, the, the low rates and using Clearview. So thanks, Bill. Absolutely. And then Kevin, I think we wanted to welcome the Olson team this morning. Um, I believe that they're on the, on the call, at least a, a few of them are on. So we want to welcome you guys. Uh, if your first, your first chance to get a feel for our company and what we do every Wednesday, uh, we really appreciate you guys jumping on and um, you know, tuning in for this, this webinar. Yeah, we really do appreciate that, guys. Looking forward to having you guys uh, on our team, if you so choose to do. Um, so, yeah, Bill and I had a – Bill came across a really cool uh, graphic that we want to distribute to you guys. And let me pull that graphic up for you guys. Maybe, Bill, you could kind of talk about it. So it's basically reasons that you're – that you should – you could tell your clients to – that they should sell this fall, right? So let me grab this thing. Yeah, I just, um, you know, in my local community where I live um, down here on the on the Newport Beach Peninsula, um, there's a, uh, a realtor, uh, Nikolai Glazer. He does a pretty good job with, um, you know, digital newsletters. And I know we've always talked about that uh, almost at nauseum, um, how yeah. it's such an easy uh, and quick way uh, to touch your clients, touch your uh, sphere of influence uh, with informative stuff. And I, I just came across his, his, you know, his newsletter just I think was either yesterday or the day before and wanted to share that uh, with everybody. Um, is it, did you just, did you just take it on, yeah. onto this? Okay. Yeah. So exactly. basically same, same info, of course. Yeah. So, you know, what we can do is we can maybe take this content and put it onto a nice um, newsletter format or, or whatever. But the point of the, uh, the newsletter was really short and concise. It was basically four four bullet points on why you should consider selling this fall. Number one being your house will sell quickly, right? We all know that your house is going to sell probably in a record number of days. Uh, and the reason being is, is buyers are more willing to compete, um, you know, with limited inventory. So, you know, and that also it kind of runs into number three, which if you are a house that's on the market, and there's limited inventory, your house is gonna be in the spotlight. You're gonna be basically featured on a, on a very short list of available homes 
and that's going to make you get more for your home, right? Um, you know, s- supply and demand, not really hard to kind of figure that one out. And lastly, if you're thinking about moving up and you've gotten record, record equity, uh, you know, you might want to consider now is a time to sell and take that equity and be a move up buyer. Maybe the house is getting too small with the kids. Maybe, um, you know, you were a first time buyer. Maybe you're, you know, want to start a family. Um, you know, plenty of reasons why our clients make these moving choices. Um, but this was a real short kind of concise thing that you can blast out to your clientele. And I think it's a really good way to touch them. It's informative. It's short. It's not a long read and they can scan through it in about a minute and it's all good stuff. It makes you look like a professional and you're sending out good content. Yeah. So I, I encourage all of you to put this in your, um, if not in your monthly newsletter, this could be a separate content piece that you blast on with social media and uh, put out in your newsletter. Um, so you're, you're basically just informing your clients in your sphere of influence. Hey, this is some info. And then this is a great follow-up piece for, for, for talking points, right, Bill? 100%. Um, you know, it, it's just a conversation starter and you never know which item, which little bullet point there is going to trigger someone to be like, hmm, you know what, I should probably talk to my realtor because I'd like to find out what my house is worth. And I know it's gone up, you know, it's gone crazy. Um, or, you know, honey, we should talk about, you know, maybe this is the time to, to, to move. So it, it's just a, it's a conversation starter. It's just a little, a little in your face, good informative data. And, um, you know, we really encourage you to, to do something so simple as just push this out. Yep. Push it out. uh, Follow up with a phone call to at least a portion. You don't have to, you know, if you have a giant database, you don't have to call everybody, but you're, you know, call everybody on your hot list, call everybody on your A list. Um, Just remind people that you're there. It's really important to just continue to contact your sphere of influence. And this is a great reason to do it. So appreciate that, Bill. Always like um, when, and all, all of our agents, you know, a lot of times they'll send us information um, that I use and I, I, I really respect that, uh, Don Kearney is always sending me really relevant stuff. And so the more we know, the more uh, powerful we are and the more effective we are with our clients. So it's always a good deal. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. So let's move into our presentation today. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to be talking about, uh, our digital footprint. Let me create a new screen share for us. Okay, so this is our, and one second. So uh, real quick, John Espinosa in the, the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, he says in Silicon Valley area, we've noticed a higher than usual decrease in home prices. It's been steadily increasing over the past several weeks, FYI. So good to know. Thank you for that, John. Um, so getting back to our realtor, uh, search engine optimization or establishing your digital footprint So this is really important, as I said, because a lot of people will Google our name when they are referred to us or if they hear about us or maybe they even, you know, got one of our communications from our marketing. So in a lot of different cases, somebody's going to probably end up Googling our name to figure out who we are. Right. There's a lot that you can learn when you Google someone's name, Um, sometimes good, sometimes really bad. Uh, we had a, a realtor that joined us uh, a few months back and everything seemed great. And then we started slowly getting information and did some research online that this person was probably a major scam artist. So um, we do it all the time as well. So we want to make sure that we're dealing with people that are reputable. So, you know, everybody does it. It's not something that's, uh, you know, new uh, in the last 10 years, right? most people will, will Google your name and figure out if you're the right realtor for them, or if you're at least reputable, or at least if there's no huge red flags <laughs> that are saying this person is horrible. So um, the first thing that you wanna do when you're doing what we call search engine optimization, that's SEO. So SEO is you know things that we can do, techniques that we can use on our websites, on and off websites, to promote certain things that we want to promote. So first of all, search engine optimization, you would think being a realtor that you want to optimize your website and all of your content for the word realtor and your city, 
Well, that's a great thing to want to be able to do, but that means that you're going up against the biggest money in the industry, the biggest of the bigs, and they spend billions. So that's a tough road to try. That's an uphill battle, as we say. So in, in, uh, in order to make sure that we are actually doing something effective with our search engine optimization, the first thing we want to do and is easy to do is to take control of your name. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean by creating content on your website and on other uh, websites, community, or I'm sorry, um, business directories and social media sites are huge. And those are areas where we can have our content on and those will come up in the search results as well. So taking control of your name means that you have your information on tons of places other than your website um, all over the internet. So what do I mean by that? I've included this nice little spot or this nice little link to um, HubSpot. And let me just share that link with you guys. Okay, so this link goes to a really cool website called HubSpot. HubSpot is a good marketing website. They've got all kinds of really cool uh, marketing, you know, strategies, and it's really endless. It's a massive site. But what I've uh, shared for you guys here is their 50 best free business listings and their online direct directories. So these are all you know, either social media sites or online business directories where you can have your information. So why is that important? It's important because these websites have, you'll notice the, this little domain rating here. So a domain rating means that they are, you know, are how powerful are these websites by themselves in search engine results? So you can see the very top one, Facebook, it's no, no surprise, it's massive. Um, there's millions and millions of pages on that website. Um, so, you know, they get a domain rating of 100. You can go all the way down here and we get down to, you know, some of these lesser known, lesser used business directories that don't have as many pages, they don't have much uh, interaction. So they have a lower domain rating. So what's the, the theory? Go with, and try to get your information on as many of these high domain rating websites. And that's why it's cool they have this written in order. So I think a great uh, exercise is to at least take the top 25. Now, some of these are paid. I would just go through the ones and just do the ones that, are, that you can have a free listing on. And when you make a listing on these different websites, you wanna have all of your same information, right? So you wanna have, uh, your name and the word realtor, most likely in every one of these these listings, and you want to you want to fill out the the uh, you know any of these uh, profiles to the best of your ability. You want as much information on them as possible because that also will help your uh, your overall uh, you know viewability within these 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 uh, different sites. So once you've done that, what happens is then someone will go and they'll do a, a search for either your name, like Charles Barnes is one of our, our realtors, uh, your name and the word realtor. So this is the kind of the search results that would pop up here. And so this is what I'm talking about by taking control of your name. So you want your information that you control on as many of these websites that, that pop up, right? Another variation, someone might search for is the word Charles Barnes and your city, Buena Park, or the community that you serve. And so Charles has done a really good job of making sure his information pops up. Uh, it looks good. He's even got his Google uh, local site filled out. He's got good reviews. Um, so all of these different, th these different uh, listings are things that he's almost 100% filled out a form and filled out you know his uh profile on that website so he's done a really good job of taking control of his name so another uh thing that we can do is we can also within you know search engine optimization for realtors is we can 
uh, create community pages. So community pages, and so that's number two here, community pages are pages within our website where we can offer information about the local communities. And it could be a city, it can be communities within a city. In a perfect world, you would wanna have a community page for pretty much every community within your city that you serve. And I mean, every single one. Um, doesn't take long to make them. Um, and they, they do come up in search engine results when people do searches for specific communities. Now remember, not all the time when someone's looking for a home, are they just going, okay, I'm looking for homes in Southern California. A lot of times they're not just gonna say, I'm looking for homes in Irvine. They're gonna say, I'm looking for homes in Irvine and I'm looking for homes in Turtle Rock within Irvine. So they, a lot of people know the schools that they wanna be by, they know the, in the areas and they will search for those areas specifically. So we can stand a lot by creating these community pages where we can come up in the search engine results. So let me do a quick search. Something like uh, Wayne Park homes for sale, Lakeside community within Wayne Park. So again, Charles has done a great job of creating a page within his website. And he's actually dedicated an entire website to this community, to be honest, because he lives there which is also a great idea. So we click on this and this has all the information about the Lakeside private gated community. There's 346 homes. He's done an amazing job. He includes video in his, you know, on his, on his landing page. Um, let me share that with you guys one sec. Just realized I was displaying his website and you guys can't see it. So let <laughs> me toggle over there. So yeah, so we did a search for Buena Park, Homes for Sale, Lakeside, and literally the second thing that pops up in the search results is Charles Barnes' website. So again, he's got a great synopsis of what the Lakeside private gated community is, 346 homes, fine living in Buena Park. So it's no wonder his information comes up number two in the search results, right? So how powerful is that? And so let's just do another quick one because he also services other uh, areas. And so another one that he, that he uh, services is Amaridge Heights. And so the same thing, he's got, Let's see if he comes up here. Yep, comes up again. So he's built out pages. Oops. He's built out pages that will attract a viewer to these, these particular places within Buena Park. So another really, really important thing to do when you are creating your own realtor SEO. And you'll notice that he's able to do that. And the other uh, you know, big giant companies, they're doing it a little bit too, but he actually gets a ton of, of uh, traffic to these individual sites that he creates. So it's a really, really cool thing that he's done. So another thing that you can do for realtor SEO is, is we can create pages that focus on one keyword. So you can have an entire page dedicated to uh, something like a community or even um, you know, something like the word reviews, right? So another thing that a lot of people will do when they are looking for a realtor is they'll do a search for you know, your name and the word reviews or your name, realtor and the word reviews. And they're gonna be looking for those third-party sites. So again, when we're looking at that list of you know, possible places where we can have our information, those third-party review sites are really important. So I think the most important one is Google. 
Um, Yelp, a lot of times they'll even make you a, a site and you don't even want it. So a lot of times it's really important to actually create a Yelp site and even try to send some, some people to the Yelp site uh, to leave reviews. Problem there again is Yelp loves to cull good reviews. And then they'll say something like, oh yeah, uh, pay us monthly and we'll unlock your, what they call, um, I forget what they call them, cold reviews or something like that. But there's a small little uh, link at the bottom that shows uh, these other reviews. So you wanna be able to uh, send people to Google to leave your reviews because they don't do that as bad. So um, a lot of our agents have spent time sending people to uh, Yelp and then those reviews end up not showing up in their total. So uh, kind of frustrating, but some savvy Yelp users know that you can click that little link and, they, they, and you can see those uh, those filtered reviews, I think what they call them actually. So uh, Bill, any takeaways at this point in the presentation for you? Um, no, I just think that, um, you know, as far as the uh, kind of micro targeting the communities, um, it, it does start with a macro search usually, and then it gets refined and refined downward. And I think that's where Charles um, or a realtor like Charles can have such an impact on getting leads or, or driving new buyers or sellers to you know his services is by having that real dialed in local presence. Yeah, a hundred percent. So it's it's nice that uh, and and he spent a lot of time. He and I work together quite a bit, and you know it, it shows because he has those results. Yeah, so, so it's it's really the one way you can compete uh, with these big boys, uh, the Zillows, the, the Redfins, the uh, you know Trulias. Um, you know they don't they don't they don't zero in on those specific neighborhoods like you, like you mentioned. No, generally they do not. So it's it's literally like our little um, sneaky way that we can gain a little bit of of uh, market share on these search results pages. I always like to, to think of these search results pages as real estate for us, you know? So we wanna be part of this real estate. Um, so let me show you an example of how Charles has taken control of his name for the word Charles Barnes Realtor Reviews. So you'll see that he has Zillow reviews. He's got reviews on Facebook. He's got reviews. So when people do searches for him, they, they know that they're going to find some, or Charles knows that he, they're going to find good reviews about him. So why is that important? Well, the most important thing is, as we know, as realtors, we can't, we can't, uh, you know, please everybody. And we do our best. I know all of you guys do a great job. And still, there's going to be that one bad apple that just, you know, you couldn't be pleased. And there was something that went wrong in the transaction. And they're going to blame you. It's inevitable. So it's so important for us to build a, a, a base of good reviews because that's cushioning. So if you've got 10 good reviews and then some bad apple comes out of the woodwork and gives you one bad review, well, that doesn't look as bad as you not having any reviews and some bad apple coming out of the woodwork and giving you a one-star review. And then if somebody does a uh, uh, search for your name and the word reviews, a one-star review pops up and nothing else. So, and I know many small businesses have been affected by this. Uh, my favorite example is uh, one of my best pals, his uh, uh, hairdresser, a great lady, didn't know much about digital online footprints and you know, her, her, uh, you know, the way she looked online. And when you Googled her name, that poor lady had just two huge bad you know, one-star reviews and she didn't even know they were there. And, you know, and, and, and once she realized they were there, she started noticing people calling her, you know, making an appointment and then canceling the appointment. <laughs> so this is real stuff, guys. You can't have bad reviews out there, you know, um, just floating around the Internet. It really does uh, yeah, affect you. So it's a really good idea to, you know, when you do a good job, you know, ask those those nice people that you helped. Hey, you know, it helps me to leave a review on one of these third uh, party websites. Uh, Facebook is a good one to send people if you know that they're Facebook people. Google is a really good one to send people to. Um, Yelp is, you know, kind of necessary 
Um, but they, in my opinion, they're like the devil. They're the worst. So um, you, you, know, you can only do so much. And then the other thing that you can do is you can actually create a, a page within your website where you're featuring your good reviews. And then uh, Fauzi has done a good job of keeping you know, track of her good reviews. Anytime she gets a good review on a third party rep website, she adds it to her, her customer feedback page on her website. So then eventually what we can do is we can also put in some copy all about reviews and even talking about reviews and how it affects your business. And that content piece will start to pop up in the search results uh, when people do a search for your name and reviews. And so I think that's a really good thing for everybody to do is, and you can also, even on this, this page, you could embed a little video, a customer video review. You know, you, it's a great idea when you close, you know, with, with uh, one of your, your uh, clients to put a little video together. You know, it's just, you take your iPhone, you take your smartphone out, do a quick video clip. It could be 15 seconds. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith have the transaction go. They're super excited. You know, maybe do it when you're, you know, bringing them into the house, something like that. And you could have that little video here. And it's a YouTube video. You can optimize the video itself for the word, you know, realtor and your name and reviews. And so all of a sudden you're really taking control of what comes up on the internet when people Google your name. And so that's just the overall theme of today's presentation is we want you to think about that and to start creating content on your website and off of your website that get people to understand who you are, right? So that is, you know, what I want everybody to do is to, to Google their, your name, you know, make sure that you understand what comes up and then to proactively go out and start to do things that will, you know, make your search engine re results look better, right, Bill? 100% Kevin and it on the on the on the the reviews too you know they're they're weighted right one to five stars generally um mm -hmm. and just you know going back to the in, being insulated from a bad review you know if you just do simple math let's say you have three five star reviews you have great clients and then you get a two star review which maybe there was just a you know difficult client or you know we all well, we all have them as you mentioned but, um, you know, you take five plus five plus five plus two, right? The 17, divide that by four reviews. And now you still have a solid 4.25 uh, review, which is still excellent, right? Still in that right. high echelon of, of review and you've, and you've insulated yourself. So that's the math behind it, right? Yeah. And so you, know, you keep improving on that so you can get, um, you know, absorb or, you know, insulate yourself from that one bad apple or, you know, whatever the situation may have been, unfortunately, um, no one's immune to that. And, um, but that's the way to, to, to you know, <laughs> keep yourself from uh, getting dragged down. Yeah, no, we have to, we have to go on offense on this. You know, you can't just sit back and just, oh, I guess well, we'll, we'll see what happens. No, you got to be on offense. You know, you have to uh, build that review base up and you have to build up your search engine optimization so you're in control, not some of these other third partiers or, you know, maybe some uh, bad apple that you came across. So uh, that is uh, really important for everyone. Well, uh, Bill, thanks for the insight. Always appreciate that. Um, with that, I hope you guys get out there, take this stuff and use it. And if you have questions, you can, of course, contact me. And I hope that you guys get out there and make it a great week and a productive week. And we'll see you guys next week on the Wednesday webinar. Bye-bye.